Hey, I'm Ryan, this is my brother Daniel, and this is Rolls in the Family. Today we are going to be counting down our top 10 most played games of 2023. And this is going to be actually most played by just raw hours. Just what are the games right. that hit the table for the most time? It kind of kind of evens the playing field a little bit. It's Short true. games versus long games. Anything It'd be all kids make... games for you if uh, <laughs> if we were doing just uh yeah, It's true. Number of you plays. know, you, you have a point that... Uh, this list kind of is an insight a little bit into like the season of life that we're in a little bit with kind of what is actually hitting the table. What are we able to, and it is a reality that right now for me, I do play a lot of kids games with my uh, oldest who's now three, you know, you gotta, you gotta get stardom young yeah, here on yeah, the yeah. family. And uh, the other new thing for me personally is uh, doing more solo games. Um, oh, and so that's yeah. another thing yeah. that kind of plays a part. In this list, I'm interested to see where some things landed for you. Um, and it's possible you watching this might go, wow, that, you know, you may play way more hours of games in a year than we do. We also, you know, try to play across kind of our whole collection and get like every yeah, game to the spread table. Out a lot. Yeah. So it gets a lot more spread out these days than back when our collection was you know, five games that just got <laughs> hammered. It'd be the <laughs> same five every year. Yes. Yeah. Um, but all these games that we talk about, there's going to be links for in the description below. Um, you're welcome to check those out. If you're interested in buying them through those links, it actually does support us here on the channel, believe it or pays not. The bills. Uh, pays the bills. Keeps the lights on. It rolls <laughs> keeps in the, the lights on. <laughs> um, but we are going to jump into this. I will say, definitely leave down in the comments what some of your most played games in the last year were. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting to hear kind of our, our small communities, uh, yeah, responses to, to some table? of these topics in addition to looking at ours, but let's jump mm -hmm. into it and kick it over to Daniel for his number 10. Here we go. Number 10, uh, is a game that, uh, I enjoy thoroughly got rid of actually. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> like before or after you played it a lot this year. <laughs> um actually I got rid of it before. Um Interesting. Yeah, this is just a weird intro. Uh my number 10 is going to go to Ark Nova. Uh oh. so <laughs> So I actually love Ark Nova. Um and I was able to get it to the table uh twice this last year. Um and that was because I've got a, a friend uh, nearby here who loves Ark Nova. Uh, and so we've played uh, a couple games with uh, them. He got the uh, Marine Worlds. Is that the name mm -hmm. of it? The expansion. Um, he got to play that. And that was incredible. And so uh, Ark Nova. Uh, yeah, it's funny that it's on this list, given that it actually, I believe this last or maybe it was the year before, exited my collection and went actually to Ryan's collection. Yes. Uh, so there you go. We'll see if maybe it'll make it onto your list. But uh, yeah, Ark Nova got two plays in and uh, is one that it, it was funny. I was joking with the guy the other day that, uh, you know, I can uh, I felt OK getting rid of it because I knew that he had it. And so yes. it's not it was like even though my wife, you know, was so so on it, I know I can still play. I'll Ark let Nova. you play with me too, dang. Yeah, I can play with him. And then if I'm out, in, you know, if I'm visiting you, I can play with you. So I've yeah. got Ark Nova out there because, man, is it a fun one. And so, yeah, that's been uh, enjoyable to get to the day table. Uh, it's funny, two times it like, it's, it's kind of like, oh, is it only two times? But I guess for a game like it's that, it's a longer you know, game. So it's a longer game. You know, so that'll do and, it. Yeah, there you go. That is my number 10. Alrighty, my number 10 is a game that is in a unique category of it gets kind of a boost from the fact that it works with a lot of different groups, but it actually now is entering kind of my kids games category of getting some plays actually with my son. This is Marvel United, which is not a game you would normally recommend for three-year-olds. But my son is very into Spider Man right now. Very I into think some of very this. smart. But very yeah. smart. But my son is a genius. So we play. <laughs> uh, no, he's very into uh, all the superhero stuff right now. And so he knows a lot of these characters and stuff. Um, so for him, it's almost like this, you know, just getting to act out some of these cool things with these characters. And the game is simple enough that while. You know, it's almost if I, it's just me and him, it's almost like playing solo a little bit from a strategy perspective. Yeah. But, you know, you find places where it's like, oh, you know, give him two good options 
I'm like, what do you want to do? Do you want to go over here and rescue this person or go over here and beat up this? And it's like, you know, either one's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, my plays, I think I got a 15, 15 plays this last year. And that's probably kind of split, mm. probably like half and half between kind of like playing it with him and then playing it with my normal um, groups. It's one that I am very happy to see getting to the table because I backed a lot of content for it. And that's part <laughs> of what's been very fun. You better fun. be playing that game. Yes. Gosh dang it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's part of what's very fun is I almost always can be pulling out new stuff. Although it is funny playing with my son because it's like he wants to be Spider-Man every time and he tells me who, you know, who I'm going to be. So... Um, you know, we're staying within a pretty limited character <laughs> roster <laughs> for those games. Hey. Um, but yes, a lot of fun. One that I think is going to be a consistent riser over the years. Like, I think this is one that every year I, I think I'm going to get it to the table a lot um, just because of the accessibility. The uh, well, the fact that my, you know, playing with kids is going to start being very fun. Um, but it's just a very appealing light cooperative game to get to the table for a lot of people because most people know Marvel superheroes and um, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's an appealing theme. Yep, so made it in at my number 10, squeaked in this year. Nice, nice. Coming over here to my number nine is going to go to a game that I would kind of imagine is a game that would make it on a list like this uh, nearly every year uh, for me. Uh, only got two plays of it, although for a game like this, that's not too shabby, but that is going to go to Eldritch Horror. That has I, uh, been a staple for us on our yeah, most Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's, like, it's like, I bet you, I mean, it, here's actually would be an interesting question, is if you looked at like the last 10 years of a list like this, which we obviously don't have the data of. Um, although actually, I mean, you could do some estimations. We don't have the hour. I mean, you, we've been, you've been tracking plays at least for, you know, quite some time now. Quite some time, um, yes. So, so you actually might be able to know this, but is what game has been on the top 10 a list like this for... Uh, that long and so uh elder tour yeah i got two plays of it in and it uh i know one of these plays was horrific i i remember it was like one of the i mean this is one of those games you know there's so much variability and whatnot that uh things can go horrible and i you know you get so excited whenever you like bring this one out because you know what it can deliver and i just remember one of these plays man it just wrecked us i mean it was one of those like you don't even know or you you didn't even have a chance uh i mean you're it was just but it was actually i'm remembering it better now because it was early in the year uh we didn't even have a chance and yet it still took a long time like it was like a drawn out yeah. death but we never had a chance along the way or at least never felt like we did so uh one of them was rough i think the second one we ended up because we needed to get a better taste in our mouth after that one so we got two plays of this early in the year because we did one shortly later and that one was a lot more fun but uh yeah elder tour i think is gonna every year even if just getting a couple plays of it you know uh we'll sneak onto a list like this so that is my number nine yeah, so uh, Elder Tor, I also got two plays of, and it missed my list at number 11. So, oh. so there you go. It might actually be the first time in a long time that it missed my list. Yeah, uh, that is kind of... So, kind you know, of make room for uh, some kids' games, I guess. I guess. Uh, segue into Ryan's number le- nine. Ryan's leveled up his gaming <laughs> from uh, Elder Tor to the, the real yes, games. Yes, yes, game. just wait. Uh, it, this is a funny list for me just because of the different dynamics I have oh, to play geez, with that. Uh, my number nine is a kid's game. And oh, the other funny man. thing about kid's games is typically like there'll be a game that my son really latches onto and is like one of his favorites for like a stretch. And then we won't, I don't think this one I've even played in the last like six months, but because we played it so much during that stretch, um, it is going to make the list. This is spot it is like the game system but we specifically have like the disney 100 years of wonder edition of it and this is just a simple little game of flipping two cards and who can be the quickest to identify which character matches on the two cards it's actually kind of interesting how they construct these decks because it's guaranteed for any two cards in the deck that only one match will be there but it's always exactly one match and so there was a stretch that him and I played this all the time. I would give him a nice, like, 
you know, five, 10 second handicap before I would start looking for it, which is actually a pretty good way to balance it. I could basically play as hard as I wanted to after that uh, mm-hmm. handicap. But yeah, I got a, let's see, 38 plays of that. So despite being <laughs> short, it still uh, powered it up enough to make it onto the list. And honestly, it's a, a kid's game I would recommend. Particularly, I like the Disney edition because it has more characters per card and also more cards in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so there you go. If you're looking for, if you're, you have kids, you guys are into Disney, I recommend yeah. uh, Spot It. Disney yeah, there you go. You've got the, you've got the the strong themes going here in this list so far. You got Marvel, you got Disney. So. Yeah, hey, don't underestimate the power of these IPs that people. And I guess Disney owns Marvel now. It's really just Disney, the Disney behemoth <laughs> taking over the world. I know. Um, at least taking over my list thus far. Wow. Okay, Ryan. Very very nice. Uh, coming in now at my number. Eight is a game that is funny that it's it's on this list and I had to like think about did I really play this one that you know that many times to make it on the list but clearly I did and this is gonna go to <laughs> the data doesn't lie <laughs> the data does not lie this is gonna go to wingspan okay. uh, I got I got four plays of wingspan in this last year and now that thinking back on it I did have a, a couple that I introduced it to. Um, earlier in the year and and we got hooked and played it a few times and and whatnot and i played it with a few different groups and, and throughout the year so uh yeah we've uh be able to get that in four times i mean wingspan uh is one that uh we both own and uh have really enjoyed with uh i mean it's just a i mean it's just a great game in terms of the um you know cards engine building kind of uh, I love games that have uh, this kind of limited, a- very simple actions, but then it's kind of like the the engines that kind of build off of that that are are where a lot of the decision making works. Um, I know that's the case for Wingspan. Um, I know recently with Earth, uh, that's one we've yeah. enjoyed that has kind of a similar uh, feel to that. Uh, and now with with this whole uh, Wormspan coming out, Ryan, you know, now we gotta have to. Uh, look into that. Uh, so many games that uh have kind of a similarity to this system, but uh, it's um uh, one that I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed and uh, got to play it. Yeah, I mean, four times for a game like that isn't too shabby. So, um, it's one that yeah, I these, feel like these days that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good, and it's one that is I find one of my go tos if I've got a group that is like kind of looking for a first game to play that's kind of in that next maybe like a step up mm-hmm. from like a ticket to ride or something but yeah. like like kind of their first like okay you know little starting to get a little heavier here wingspan's oftentimes one of the first ones i go to and so i think a lot of these plays were with uh new groups or, or groups that were looking for kind of a first play kind of in that I don't know what do we call. I don't know what the official weight we give it. Is it medium? Is that kind of where we? Uh, yeah, I guess in our like our recommendation official, site, we would call that a medium, a medium complexity. Yeah. yeah, that's usually one of my first go tos, kind of in the medium weight. So there you go, number eight, wingspan. Nice, nice wingspan. Yeah, wormspan is one of the the new. For those that don't know, they're making a new dragon themed version of wingspan. But it is a name that doesn't. Uh, I feel like it doesn't translate very well when you're not seeing the word because you, if you hear worm span, you, <laughs> think, of, you think of worms. It's yeah. Like, oh, you know, interesting choice, but you know, <laughs> are there would, enough different species of worm <laughs> to. That would not be a very appealing theme. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, all in on that. Uh, cool. My number eight, I'm kind of just like rattling through the different ways that things get onto my list. And this is an example of one that's powered on the list largely because of solo play. Um, one that I got fairly recently, um, I've played it once multiplayer and 23 times solo, and that is Bullet Heart. And Bullet Heart is really a unique game um, and one that I've really loved bringing into my solo rotation because it feels so different from some of the other solo games I play because it's partly got its foot in like the puzzly category, like just puzzling patterns. But most games that are puzzling patterns, like that's basically the game. Whereas Bullet Heart has this layer of 
push your luck. Like you're pushing your luck from your bag of how much you draw before you tr- start trying to clear things. And no, if I draw another one, I might like set up a pattern without having to spend as much to like manipulate to get the pattern. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely like a push your luck there that's kind of exciting with the draws from the bag. Um, but very, very fun, especially solo with all the variety of the heroines and the bosses that you can, can face. Um, so this is one, it's short. I mean, when I play it solo, I'm usually knocking these out in like 15 minutes or so. Uh There's another reason why I played it so many times is because I'd play it two or three times in a sitting. Um, cause I didn't get this game until, you know, two thirds, three fourths of the way through the year. Um, oh, and it made it on the list. That's... And it made it on the list. So it'll be interesting to see. I could see this being a one that, uh, you know, continues to rack up another a lot of plays. I will say, though, like over the last year, I've definitely expanded my solo collection or games that I would play solo, which yeah. means that I'm spreading it out more. Like, whereas early on, like I only had like one or two games that I actually played solo. So it was like, wow, those just like, if I was playing solo, that's what I was playing. Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see on the list like this in the next, you know, few years, do I start diluting my solo plays enough that some of these don't pop up as high. But for now, powered by the kind of the excitement of it being new to the collection, Bullet Heart uh, makes it onto the list with 24 plays. And I contributed to one of those. Yes, Dang was one of them. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> the one multiplayer game. Yes. It uh, is yes. It's actually a game I would love to play multiplayer more. Like I don't yeah, see it as just cool. a solo game. Uh, but it is a very good solo game. Nice. My number seven is a game that is new to both of our collections this year. And I would venture is a strong contender at being on a list like this. Every year, just given the, um, I think, widespread appeal that it just has. It's got great visual appearance. It's also got a very wide player count. And this is going to go to Heat Pedal to the Metal. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, uh, I mean, this is just an absolutely fantastic game. But the fact that it can be, it can be play just as well at two players as it can at six just makes it so accessible <laughs> you know yeah, there's so many times when you're picking a game off the shelf where heat could be in the conversation of what game you would oh, pick just absolutely. because of that breadth and like you know it's not too long and pretty people who like heavier games like it but you can also have somebody that mm-hmm. normally doesn't play those games that maybe that's kind of the heaviest they want to go but they might like it yeah, totally. And it's so I got five plays of it in this last year. Quite a f- uh, several of those, or maybe just one of those with you. I can't remember if I At played least one. I know I played one once with mm-hmm. you. Um, and actually, I think that was a six, six player. player. Yeah. Whew, that true. was, and that was so much fun. <laughs> like that was, I was, I didn't, I wasn't even close to winning, and yet I was just giddy the whole game. Man, that was uh, just an absolute blast. And that's one that. Uh, when I think of just games to introduce again to people, I mean, I guess a little bit kind of what I was saying about Wingspan, but maybe even more mm-hmm. so, like, it's just, it's got great table presence. The system is just so, uh, it's simple, but clever and just works really well. Managing the heat, I find it's got uh, some nice, I really like how it's got a little bit of a, some catch-up mechanisms, uh, you know, a little bit of that Mario Kart feel of a, uh, you know, maybe not that swingy, but like yeah. uh, ways to kind of help you, you know, if you're behind, help you catch up and uh, a little bit of being punished if you're in first place, you know, with the whole slip streaming, not being able to slip stream because you're going first. Um, and uh, all of it comes together. I mean, the more tr- we're, I mean, we're just going to we're going to be getting more tracks. We're going to be I need to play through the I, I want to do a tournament sometime. I mean, I haven't done that yet. I have you have you. You've used the garage module. Yes, least, right? yes, we've used the garage module, and that's great. I mean, that's yeah. that's fantastic. Um, and so, but have you done a tournament? No. Yet? Okay. No, yeah, yet. I don't think either of us have done that yet. So, um, that's something that's definitely you know on my. I, I need to find a find kind of the first the group to kind of play it with specifically yeah. here, and then be like, okay, let's set aside a you know a little bit longer time and do a tournament someday because that'd be an absolute blast. So, yeah, uh, and that would have a tournament would definitely uh, launch it up on a list like this in a future year. So because you get a bunch of those yeah, anything plays, with so. any kind of campaign play. Yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, that is going to be my number seven. Fantastic game. Highly, highly recommend Heat. Yes. Pedal to the metal. Yeah, I think Wingspan and Heat are probably two of our top medium complexity recommendations. Yeah. Or kind of that yeah. next step level. Like those are just two really right. solid choices. Yeah, it's a common category that games get played in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dang it, we're back to kids game land. Oh, gosh. Right. Have to Come say. On. Have to say, uh, this is a kids game that's based on a very popular modern um, game that we also are huge fans of and own the, I don't want to say the adult version, that makes it sound a little bit uh, spicier, (laughs) but uh, this is the kids version of the Quacks of Quedlinburg. It's called Quacks & Co. The Quedlinburg Dash. And this basically takes... Could have come up with a simpler name. Yeah, they should have. Um... (laughs) This basically takes kind of the bag building from Quacks. It actually kind of removes the push your luck, which kind of makes sense for a kid's game because kids are not going to be good at push your luck. <laughs> Always like kids go. Are, yeah. Um, so it definitely pushes the focus more to like kind of a kid's first bag building game because it's essentially a race on the track. And whenever you draw the pieces on your turn, you draw one on your turn, you get to move that many spaces, but then you also get to do whatever ability that particular color of ingredient gives you. And if you ever draw your black dream weed ones, those are the ones that do nothing. And once you've drawn three of them, then you're going to get to shop for new chips. There's kind of this cycle of being able to um, customize your bag according to the different ones that you want, Mm -hmm. Um, which I will say as a, you know, adult who's playing with a child this is one of my favorites to play with him in that it's quite entertaining for me too like it's fun to just be like this game i'm gonna go after these chips and it's you got the fun of the pulling from the bag and getting Mm -hmm. the you know the yellow ones let you then roll a die so there's the excitement of what thing you're gonna get there's just a lot of exciting moments and the fact that um you know you always could draw your black chips Mm -hmm. like so if you're unlucky, you could always have a comeback. Like somebody, there's always a chance, even if someone's way ahead, and I've seen it happen. Um, it is a little bit longer, which I guess is part of the reason why I've made it onto a list like this. Um, that stretch where we were getting it to the table more. Um, haven't been playing it as much recently. Um, but yeah, let's see. What did I got? 21 plays of it. Um, so that'll do it. Um, move it up the list. I mean, it's at, what, let's see, 21 plays at nine hours. So it's like a little under a half hour a play or so. Yeah. Um, which for kids' games is kind of on the long end. On the, yeah, that's a... I have some of these kids' games, like, you know, Spot It, for example, that's like most of the games are 10 minutes or whatever or less. Um, right. But yeah, there you go. Another one that managed to move up above a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of my favorite games. And here I am playing. I know. No, it's, what it's are you doing time. here, Ryan? Come on. It's a good time. I'm I'm putting the work in is what I'm you're, doing to <laughs> raise the down, next generation laying of down the uh, foundation. gamers. Yes. Yeah. There you if go. I w- hey, if you want your kids playing Agricola by five, you can't just expect that to happen. You That's, know? True. You gotta, That's true. That's gotta true. You got to get them on the curriculum. Yes. So, yes. so there we go. <laughs> that is my number seven. Nice. Okay. My uh, number six is a game that one of the shortest just scanning here i want to, it's actually the shortest game on the list here um but is making the list because we got 14 plays of it many of them together with our family because it's an absolute hit and that's going to go to so clover Wow, that's a lot of plays for you. That's definitely more than I had yeah. this year. Yeah. Well, and we had we've had plays here with, you know, uh, various groups here and whatnot. Um, but man, talk about a hit of a party game, uh, really, for both of us. I mean, you know, it was one that I remember, uh, you know, seeing, because I, I I will say the party genre is one I'm always just looking for. We, we just mm-hmm. love when we've got great party games to pull out. And so I remember looking at So Clover, and I don't know, it just... I don't know if it maybe the Clovers just seemed a little gimmicky, and it was kind of like, okay, is that really that interesting but man it's fun i mean the puzzle one of just writing a word on every side to connect two words together is really satisfying and challenging it just kind of hits that sweet spot for me um and when you find a great connection it just is immensely satisfying 
But then the, the the you know that's not even the most fun part of the game. It's then you go into this whole process of uh, everyone having going around and kind of trying to solve everyone's clover, and both when you're the one trying to solve it or the one who's just watching your clover, you know, people try to solve it. It's surprisingly funny. Like that's the yeah. thing is there's that's the thing I maybe didn't expect is there's actually a lot of humor in the game, not from like necessarily the rules, but I think if you have the right group that is vocally discussing the thought process behind why, cause you're, cause really you're trying to get in the head of the, of the clue get, of the person's yeah. whose clover it is of why they would have put these two words to given this clue for these two words. And so when you're trying to like talk for a person and make an, Oh, well they would, but they, maybe they would have said this because of this. And I just find we've had a lot of really funny situations. It probably helps when you know your uh, group yeah. really well, but uh, overall been a smash hit. And so, yeah, I've gotten a ton of plays with it. It's one of the f- uh, first kind of party games I'm going to when I'm looking at it uh, for a group. Um, you know, as long as as long as people are up for a little bit of a challenge with the word connecting two words, because that is a little, you know, you got to be ready for that. Uh, Worst case, a, suffer through, you know, five, yeah. ten minutes. And then yeah, you'll be exactly. good to go. it is. It is kind of true. So i uh, been an absolute blast uh, and coming in at my number six. So Clover. Nice. Totally agree. It's been one of the best party game additions I've had in my collection in recent years. Yeah. We did. Re- we reviewed So Clover. Maybe we we'll remember to link it above. Maybe we won't. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'm out of ki- uh, out of kids' land for now. Oh, We're gosh. back on the big boy rides okay, again. You guys can click back on the video now. Uh, this is one that I think was very would have been. I don't know that I actually did this list specifically last year. Um, we didn't have this channel last year, but yeah. <laughs> um, but I think this one would have ranked high last year for me because um, it was mm. one that, for being a little bit bigger game, was hitting the table a lot. I had groups that just really liked it. I was really enjoying it. It kind of really moved up my list in recent years of favorite games. This is Dune Imperium. Mm. I got it to the table four times this year, which I think is like less than half compared to the year before. You played it a lot the year before, yeah. But yeah, I did. Um at least a lot for me, given my collection. It's always hard to say because I know there's people that like literally, you know, especially go, if they're playing go on online. like board, board game yeah, arena. Like, and, yeah, they're playing like hundreds of games. I know, and I know. Like, I, think wow, we got, I think it. we got a comment at one point of someone that said they had like played like Ark Nova or something like an insane. Yeah, you can time, definitely so. rack up the rack up the plays. <laughs> I was like, um, oh my goodness. But hey, four plays of a game like this in a collection where I've got it's competing you, with a lot of big games. Don't listen we're to both, the haters. We're, we're both new parents. Don't it's hard yeah, to get come these on. long we're, games to the table. Okay. I know. I know. Man, once our kids um, get old enough, we'll be Yes, then we're gonna we'll be power. It's gonna be the golden list. age, baby. <laughs> the golden age go. of gaming. Uh, yeah, Dune Imperium, still loving it. It really has not gone down for me. I mean, part of that is helped by expansions. I recently got the Immortality expansion, already really enjoyed the Rise of Ix expansion. I feel like that altogether, I just really like where that sits with all of that. It feels like a finished product to me. I honestly am not really even that interested in the Uprising new standalone Mm, game, even though there's a lot of people that say like, ooh, for gamers, you know, they might even prefer this one. I'm like... I already know I love this thing. Wow. I I don't need to change it up. I don't think. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll try it someday. And I'll be like, you I'm will. Nuts. You yeah. have this. But I know. I know you. It's it's hard to justify like going out and getting it when I are. I don't know. Uh, but yep, yeah, still getting it to the table. Still one that I think will uh, be a. It's definitely got like a lock in the collection. I don't see it leaving anytime soon. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, really have enjoyed it again this year, um, and hope to continue playing. Especially uh, having the opportunity to play with people I've played before that I can throw in all the expansion stuff. Yeah, that's a game that I know when I played it, I enjoyed it. But for some reason, whenever I think about it, I have a really hard time knowing what I feel about it, and that's because I just yeah. don't think I've played it enough. You know? Yeah. Um, I want to say I've only. Played I think it that's going to happen times. more and more for us because I feel that way a little bit about games that I've played with you yeah. one time. You know, yeah, I'm, like, so it's... I, I'm like I know I liked it. I don't, but then when I think about like, do I want to get it? You know, it's hard. But yeah. Okay, here we go, Ryan. Top five. Here we go. Here my we go. number five game is a game that has not been played from. 
I want to say um, 2019 all the way until like October, like October. of this last. <laughs> yeah, wow. You knew exactly where I was going. Uh, I this exactly is going to go to Star Wars Imperial Assault. Uh, yes. So only guy have pl- started a campaign um, a few that'll months ago it. with a group, and that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, once you get a campaign going, man. And so we've gotten four plays so far. Uh, we've, we're actually right now working on uh, getting our next date scheduled, which I need to reply to the text message group. Oh, no. I'm, they're waiting on me. Uh, <laughs> hold on. No, I'm just um, but uh, yeah, so got four plays of it. And oh, man, just an absolute blast. I mean, you know, we're obviously, uh, I mean, just with limited time, you, it's like, a campaign game because yeah, I mean, this and list like, is like even more evidence of why we have a hard time with campaign games. Yeah, it's just, it's, like, it's just brutal. It's like, okay, am I g- gonna commit to this and not play any of my other games? You know, for but we've got an awesome group uh, for this and a group that like we haven't played any other games together yet, um, but have come together for this. And so, uh, yeah, it's been an absolute blast. So we've, uh, I'm on the rebel side uh which is fun because i've played both this is my fourth campaign yeah i think it's i think i've played two main two large ones one kind of smaller short campaign um so this is my third large one uh playing through the original main one again um which is nice because it's been long enough that i've i'm forgetting everything and so it's just uh everything's a surprise again uh, which is kind of nice. It's like what I uh, I want with like uh, I'm trying to do that with the Harry Potter books right now. Uh, I you know I read them in like nice. eighth grade, but I'm trying to wait long enough until I don't remember how the yeah. last book ends. Uh, but it hasn't been long enough yet, so someday. Um, someday. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's been an absolute joy, and it, I'm just reminding me again. It used to be one of my it used to be my number one game, and so being able to play it a bunch again, it's just like oh yeah. This is really good. I I missed this. Yeah, and I guess you started the campaign after we had done our top games of all time, right? Th- this last year. Yes. So yes. it'll be interesting to see the fact that you finally started it up again. Yeah, it will like be interesting to see where it lands. It. Yeah. yeah, maybe it'll just fall off the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's no no predictability with Ding, and you just don't know what you're going to get. That is very true. Uh, that is, yeah. Yes. Uh, my no, we're on number five. Yes, number five is a game you talked about. Ones that like have been staples on this list over the years. Staples. This one would likely be have Not been on course. my list every year since like 2011, basically. Wow. Uh, this is Agricola. Oh. Huge fan of Agricola. If you've not oh uh, watched gosh. the channel, I do like Agricola a lot. So I love to see it making this list because you want to see your, some of your favorite games. How did it not make mine? That is shocking. Yeah, really. It's it's off completely. You have more opportunities to play it than I do. My wife, your that's wife my wife's favorite it. game. It's my <laughs> yeah. second favorite game. What are we come doing? Come on, come on, dude. Oh, I my. got I got four plays of Agricola this year. Um, wow. So not, not a crazy amount. I mean, especially if you compare to our like 2012 statistics where we played <laughs> Agricola like uh, four times you know, in one day, 20 <laughs> times in two weeks. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just one that I will never tire of. Um, it's all, I, I don't have that many people in my gaming circles that like I think to play it with. Yeah. You know, I would have to, t- there's certain people I would have to. It's teach. a little more niche of it i don't know niche it just it's like not a super accessible like you're not just gonna like yeah whip and I, it I have to remember like it's not like somebody can't learn it and have a good time with it like yeah so i i, I like want to remind myself not to shy away from it but i think it's because i see how much my love of it is because of so many plays yeah and so it's like i know Somebody's not going to get that on the first, yeah. or even second or third. Whereas, play. like, you can pull out like a terraforming Mars, and yeah, people will. It, it, that one doesn't. They're going to get long. an experience closer to yeah. like my my experience with a game right. like that. Totally. Another example that I feel that way about, uh, like Agricola, is Teach You is another one that's like, oh, man, yeah. If you could play it with me at least like five <laughs> times, you'd start to get to like you know seeing yeah. maybe how I feel about. It. Uh, but was able to get it to the table. Actually, I did get it to the table with at least one uh, 
new player um, who enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I anticipate this one. Who knows? Maybe we'll be old farts still doing roles in the family, and I'll still be talking about Agricola in my top most played games. I don't know. Subscribe <laughs> <laughs> and uh, stick around and see. Uh, We're in this for, for the now. Non- it holds right in the middle. Of Here my we list. go. Nothing too crazy, but yeah. So. Okay, well, uh, coming over here now to my number four. Number four. Wow. is a game that I just spoke from my own lips mere moments ago. This is going to go to Terraforming Mars. Um, oh, good segue. Thank you. <laughs> that wasn't intentional earlier. I just happened to. It was just my, I knew. Um, got three plays of Terraforming Mars in this last year. And, uh, Man, we've, I, you know, I just now got the Colonies expansion, but that game is so great. And I had a group uh, this last year that specifically that was like our favorite game to play together. And so I want to say all three, I want to, and my guess is all three of those plays were with that, that same group. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one that I definitely feel like I, I don't see myself tiring of in terms of you know you've got so many cards and uh so much variability in it and so um yeah i don't even know ryan what else is there to say about a game that just uh you know brings us that much joy um yeah you know it's 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 another one that's been kind of an evergreen for us i didn't get it to the table as much this year yeah um but yeah it's just it's a great one in the cut and it's honestly the reason why we have such a hard time getting new heavier games or you know getting a lot more of them because it's like any plays of other games is yeah. times that we're not pulling out terraforming mars or agricola or some of these yeah. so it's like man you gotta earn your place in the collection if you're well in that that's like way. i think we've got i actually want to say uh we have a video com- our next cold video coming up you know games we're get- games we've been getting rid of and sometimes i feel like it's almost shocking some of the mm-hmm. games that we get rid of but a lot of times the most shocking ones are games in this category. Totally. And it's because the standard is just so freaking high. It's like yeah. you, if yeah, like you were saying, if I'm playing you, that's, n- you know, not playing Terraforming Mars, not playing Agricola, not playing Arc Nova. You know, it's so yeah, it's just I have like, games man. in this category that I rate an 8.5 out of 10 that I get rid of. Because yeah. in this category, I would rather play my 9.5s and 10s at it because it's, you know, yeah. this is like the, my favorite category of games. So totally. Yeah, but Terraforming Mars, you know, it's one that I, I don't think I can necessarily say is like a for sure permanent forever in the collection. Um, it's hard to say that about any game, to be honest. Um, but feel really, really great about it right now. And, and just, it's one that, uh, probably of that level weight, which again, I forget what we rated at. Um, it would be a medium high. Thank you, Ryan. As you can tell, Ryan's the one. Can you tell which one's (laughs) the person that spent, you know, hundreds of of hours putting together when I'm editing and I have to message Ryan and say, what rating is the, what rating is this game? Um, cause we're, we're still solidifying it um it would probably be one of the first ones i introduced to people of that weight um yeah. that's one i go to a lot uh, that works really well so three plays of it and uh yeah we'll see in the upcoming year definitely want to get the colonies expansion uh, out um even though uh apparently my wife's not excited about it so whoop on that but uh we'll see you know, no better way to convince her than just force her to play it. Ah, That's what I always say. That's what Ryan always says. Always. Yeah, there's a few things that you just can't stop me from saying repeatedly. That's one of them. Wow. My number four is the third game in a row on my list that I played four times. So of those games, it's just the longest. So those four plays were a little bit longer than the others. It's in, I would say, a similar category um, weight wise to my previous one, Agricola. This is Arc Nova. Probably wow. just took longer because Arc Nova is a newer game to me, whereas Agricola's an old hat. I know how I oh, yeah. know, can play that a little quicker. 
Um, but Arc Nova, this one is one that I uh, acquired from Daniel's collection. Um, and is of games in this way, it was kind of the big new one that I like wanted to make sure I got to the table a few times. Like I really felt compelled to, you know, play it again and again. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I really like it a lot. And um, it definitely That's made an impression reason. with those first uh, plays. Yeah. Um, one that I'm excited. I know you talked about the Marine Worlds expansion um, that the Front of Gears yes. acquired. That's must one that I know I'm going to pick up buy. at some point. Must um, buy. Yes, it's <laughs> that a must thing buy. was so good. Um, but yeah, it's had a really good time with Arc Nova. It's every once in a while there's a game that when I research it, it's just like there's no reason this game should miss for me. <laughs> like you just look at like what is in the game and what I like in games. It's just like, well, there's nothing feels like, like there's a home nothing run. that clever about it in terms of like introducing some totally new innovative concept. It's just a bunch of really great mechanics. Yeah. Brought together in a fantastic, you know, game altogether. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what many plays does for it for me and kind of mm-hmm. the rankings of it. I know it was pretty high on my list this last year, even being pretty new. Um, but yeah, very good time with Arc Nova, one that needs, as we talk about it right now, I'm like, I got to get to the table again. It's been a little bit. Um, I definitely want to see it get some plays this year. Um, so I'm glad. I, I'm, I'm a little sad that, you know, it's out of your collection for, for your sake. Sad that your wife isn't as as big on it, but I, it was nice to uh, yeah, yeah you're get, welcome, it, uh, get it at the Daniel discount. The Daniel discount. Hey, um, at least when you sell to me, you know, you don't want to meet Daniel selling on like Facebook Marketplace. Oh yeah, I'll make bring it. you out for all your worth. Uh, higher He'll than market value. Convince you to buy it above MSRP. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, okay, it's my number three is man, just the when you talk about games that you want to just that probably the the game that has gone over the best of just introducing to as many different groups of people and it's just been a hit, it's this one. And that is the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Got seven plays of it in this last year. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of things that this game has going for it uh, that make it work so well, not only with new people, but getting, you know, just getting played a lot. Uh, One being the push your luck. um, I don't know, just there's just a lot of excitement around kind of that, you know, everyone's doing their own thing, going in the pot. And uh, and and that push your luck element to it, um, the chips in the bag, which Ryan and I spoiler have both. It's not spoiler. What am I talking about? Uh, spoiler, but, not spoiler. <laughs> I've done. <laughs> oh no, Daniel! Now they know that we have the upgraded <laughs> chips. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, newsflash. Maybe that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, we both have the upgraded chips, which are essential. And they so just the whole pulling from a bag is oh, just really like the, the game is just filled with super satisfying things that are like make you feel just yeah really good yeah. you know like and you don't have to wait for it it's like you always are just you're, doing you're your always turn just doing and, yeah. really satisfying things you're pulling from a bag you're pushing your luck you're buying chips to throw back into your bag and it's just like that's all you know just, we're probably reinforcing all these like really negative oh, psychological tendencies of modern My society gosh, i know yeah, love it it's, it's just like the designer of it. it's just like some psychologist who just like knows yeah the, it's like this will wreck them <laughs> so can you imagine <laughs> yeah and then but uh although they uh the, they would have included those nice upgraded chips from the from the start if they really knew True. what they were doing because well they knew they had to keep the price down enough that people would get people in. would actually Wouldn't, buy it yeah. yeah and then maybe they were the ones that actually designed the upgraded chips too and it's just it's all big conspiracy it's a big conspiracy yes um but man i i want to say most a lot of these plays were with just different groups all mm-hmm. over um because it's one that we just pull out all the time and it you know, there's, I always love people's faces because I, what I like to do is, you know, you, you have the ingredients, you teach the game, you play it with them. 
And then after the game is usually when I show them that, oh, the ingredients actually are variable every game. Yeah. And it's kind of this, because usually it's like, oh, that was really fun. You know, and then I'm like, well, you think that was fun. These are different every game. And it's like, oh my goodness, that's sweet. So yeah, tons of variability to where we can not only play with new groups, but with the same group, it gets played with casual gamers to our some of our heaviest gamers like it as well. So it gets played a lot. And I think uh, that's why it shot up this high for me all the way to my number three. Number three. Quacks of Quill. Nice. Love me some quacks. Yes. I haven't said it before. That's the other thing Ryan says all the time. Yeah. There's a lot. Okay. So it's a long list of things (laughs) I say all the time. Uh, My number three is where I I lose my gamer cred card here. This is going to be the shock. You did already. uh, (laughs) If I I haven't lost it yet, this will do me in. Uh, I I just will present it without comment and then uh, try to explain myself. Uh, My number three most played game by hours in 2023 is Uno. As in the uh, card game that everybody knows and that uh, nobody in our like core audience probably plays very often. But, but dang on, it's really because uh, my, I play with my son. It's effectively a children's game in my collection. And if I look at it through that lens, it's actually a fun little card game to play with, you know, a three-year-old. Uh, but yes, I... Uh, Played 49 games of Uno, 49 oh, sessions. And the reality is there was a stretch. There was a stretch there where every morning when my son got up out of bed, the first thing he wanted to do was play Uno. And, and that like did it. I mean, you do that for grind. 50 days in a row and you know, you'll make it on. How many days do they say does it take to build a habit? I don't know. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we seem to have broken that habit. We haven't played it nearly I as much I think it's like recently. 60 something days, so that's probably why. <laughs> okay, yeah, it did not <laughs> stick. Dang it. Um, but it is funny, that pocket was enough to really move it up here. Probably not a game people were expecting to see on the list. Uh, or wanted to. Or wanted to see. You know, yeah, Ryan, we got the so affi- mechan- we got mechanically. The affiliate what's link for Uno down below. Yeah, go, go check go it check out. What, yeah, Ryan, what's the, what's, the, what's the most interesting part about Uno's mechanics here? Break it down for us. Well, I don't want to talk too long, but uh, it, honestly, the best part about Uno in, in like its niche of playing as like a simple card game with kids or, you know, other people that are really wanting to play a light game is honestly the drama of it. There's not very many meaningful decisions, but there is the drama of, you know, getting down to not very many cards, but you might not. Somebody can come back even if they have a lot of mm. cards and just a lot of it is just seeing how it plays out. But we've seen other examples of games where most of the fun comes from seeing how it plays out. Nice. Um, so this, you know, this year, I think I kind of softened a little bit on Uno as Ryan, far as, you know, not thinking it's so bad. The Uno so stan bad. of our channel. Yes. yes. That said, I do. It is like pretty much exclusively a children's game. As wow. far as, from my perspective, don't listen I'm, I'm not to any Uno lovers to be out there. Elitist to those that enjoy <laughs> yeah, it as a light that was very card game, but for the whole me Uno personally, fans. I know all our Uno fans are unsubscribed. Dang it, we Gosh, lost dang our. It. We just like lose half really our subscribers after this video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Ryan. But for my taste, yeah, get, uh, okay. it's one that I'm probably only going to look to play if I'm yeah. playing with young kids. Okay, I won't recommend Uno next time over there. Uh, yeah. My number two. We should, that we'll, we should live stream it on the channel. <laughs> live Maybe. stream two, two player, you know. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, my number two, want. Ryan, is a game that was new to my collection um, and got played a bunch of times because it was a smash hit and is a staple for millennia to come. And that is Cthulhu Death May millennia. Die. Millennia. Millennia. Wow. Was that? Sorry. I just felt like I needed to say something big. So I, I went for it. Um, <laughs> so yes. I got six plays of Cthulhu Death May Die in and uh, uh, and this one was just an absolute blast I mean you uh, kind of taken that what we love about uh, a little bit of what we love about like Eldritch Horror it also gives a little bit of kind of an Arkham Horror vibe of uh, kind of the the more kind of uh, you actually feel like you're in you know you're moving like kind of in rooms kind of the mission uh, and whatnot. Um, and there's just so much greatness in this game from incredible 
uh, characters that have such a cool thing where like you kind of almost want to go insane because you get really powerful, but the tension of you also die if you go too insane. So that's a really fun kind of like tension in the game. I find uh, the m- whole combination of Cthulhu monster t- and mission, those like combining together is a ton of fun, ton of variability in that um, the uh, actual like final, you know, monster when he comes on the board is incredibly epic. And that's like kind of a feeling you really want in a game like this is this like culmination boss fight feel. And it totally feels that way. And even the whole mechanic where um, he has like the boss monster has like levels to him. So like you have to, you, you, he has like these cards and after you defeat the first card, it like moves off to the side, but then they like compound abilities of of as you move through each level so he's getting like stronger and stronger until you finally kill him and so that's really like intimidating and cool and the groups i mean i i have so many people like that i play games with that love kind of the elder tour um stuff like that and oftentimes those games are three four hours to have a game like this that can play in one and a half to two hours kind of range right there but deliver such an exhilarating experience has been absolutely fantastic. So that is why it is coming in here at my number two place. Number two. 2023. Just a fantastic one, man. I don't know. I want to play that one again. It's good. And honestly, it's of ones I've played that I don't own. It's like right about yeah. at the top of the list of one that I'm like, I, I really do think I probably need to pick it up at some point. Need it's to. one of those ones that I'm like, I just got to keep an eye on like the secondhand market. Like if a good deal yeah. came up, for it, I it. would maybe have to jump on it. Jump on top of the box. Jump on it to my number two, which is a solo only game. Powered up the list by just playing the game by myself. Um, and this is man. a game that you only play solo. Like it is designed to be a That's solo game. That's not true, game. Ryan. We played cooperative. That's true. We did kind of play it too, but I was mostly uh, coaching you. Uh, this <laughs> wow, is so you're Final Girl. I wasn't playing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was basically just telling you what to do. Yeah. Uh, Final Girl has become really a go to. And honestly, it's a game that has further opened me up to more solo gaming just because of how much of a good experience I've had Mm. getting it to the table. Um, The insane variability with granted, you have to pick up quite a few sets to get that insane variability, but that I can match any killer with any location, mix it up, pick a final girl. And even within those combinations, the variability is huge. Like the item decks are all, going to be different the events for that location um and so it's just this endless variability to explore and it's so fun to play um just try a combination that you haven't tried before um it's one that it for my shorter solo gaming gives me a little bit of that feel i get from an elder tour a cthulhu death may die kind of that you know just what's going to happen in this game it's kind of a sandbox of exciting possibilities um So one that is maybe trailing off a little bit just because I'm getting a few more solo options um, to kind of bounce between in the collection. That said, I'm going to have season three coming this year, um, which I am excited for. I really enjoyed a lot of the season two. You know, they're pushing the, the designers are pushing the system a little in more creative ways in some of these newer sets. And it's just very fun to to play in these new um, kind of variations on the formula. Um, so yeah, it's one that, you know, I don't have to count on anybody but myself to get this to the table. Uh, and it did indeed get to the table many times, 21 Mm. times, if I didn't mention that. Wow. Um, and so, yeah, number two, not my most played game of the year, but close. And by close, I mean, not really that close, actually. Ryan loves my number one is in a, in a league of its own this year, but, Mm. Ryan loves not relying on anyone but himself. That's the moral of the story. Yeah, if there's anything I've learned this year, it's that, you know what? Maybe I just like games and not people. Like, oh. maybe, maybe you know, it's I'm the opposite. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we definitely, we're, we're a little flipped on. Uh, <laughs> board game. Yeah, I hate I, board I games, like but people. at least I, I they like just bring people. them together with people. Okay, Ryan, let's, uh, let's bring it home here to my number bring one. Um, 
this game probably has the greatest uh well, if you do a list like this every year the greatest variability of it could probably most years not make this list and yet very easily smash to the top and this year it came it to is. the top and that is going to go to twilight imperium fourth edition um only two plays of this game, but you know, two plays that gets you sixteen hours, and that'll uh, that'll get you that'll get you the top on my list. And so, um, we're just an absolute blast of a time. It was obviously it was with the same group, um, which unfortunately I'm not uh, with that group anymore. So now we got to find a a new, and this, that's where it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if yeah. it's going to get played this next year. We'll see because it's that's a and just this stage of life of oh my gosh, you know, how are you going to get a TI4 game in. But that's besides the point. Uh, TI4, just an absolutely wonderful game. Um, And to be able to get two plays of it in, uh, I mean, both plays were just an incredible time. Um, You know, what what was interesting, one of them was a, we started early, we started in the morning and played like during the day on a weekend. The other one, we actually did a a post-dinner into the late night. I know night when you game. told me that I was like bold move. You here. know what? We it was like a we was like a five p.m. Uh, uh, game and uh, we, but everybody had played before at that point or was um, that... yes everyone oh uh, no actually no no two of them had no sorry don't uh, mean to make you dig in your memory here. yeah yeah I was trying I was trying to remember the full yeah two of them one of them had played TI three. Um, and then the other one hadn't played at all. Um, and, but it was amazing. It was just so much fun and uh, intense and the memories, like you'll just never forget. So, uh, to get two plays of it is just incredible. I wish I could get two plays of it in every year because it's incredible. Uh, I've got someone who lives uh, nearby in my neighborhood who apparently loves TI4. So, uh, hey, if you're watching, walk over yeah. here and let's play TF4. But not probably not two player, but probably not. <laughs> just play it three handed. Oh yeah, we could each play yeah, three of the and then and just yeah. to, you know, you have to act like you don't know what yes. your other people Dip- Yeah, yeah, do diplomacy between yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolute blast. And Ryan, it just is a shame that it's unlikely we're ever going to play TI4 together. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh probably it's just... it, it, it'll probably happen you know, at least once again before we... You think uh, so? The nursing you know, home? The, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Someday. We're old now. That's the only time we're going to have time out. for this. <laughs> I need to get it to the table. I haven't played it in a long time. I also uh, have TI4, um, but I haven't played it since, uh, you know, pre-COVID. So okay. it's been, been a hot minute. So Aaron, I got I to gotta make that happen this year. Bring us home. I'm going to bring us home with my number one, which I totaled 22 hours of so i i bested your ti4 total um and this is powered entirely by what you had the effect of with star wars imperial assault same thing here if you start a campaign game and you've got a group that's gonna like consistently you know we're gonna consistently try to get together to play this um you know it adds up this is lord of the rings journeys in middle earth 13 games of it. Our group is one play short of finishing the first campaign. Ugh. We are currently on pause as regulars of our channel are aware of. Cause I say that every single time I talk about this game now of, we're basically waiting. Can't believe you let him go. That is <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. That should have been yes. a vetoed. Well, and it was hard because we knew he was going to be leaving for the year. Um, and we played one game and we had like a few hours. That's like, do we do the last scenario? But, man, you don't want to end up in a situation where they had like a hard cut off and it's like, okay, we don't want to ruin the finale by pushing it. Yeah. Uh, so it's waiting for when they get back. Uh, <laughs> but I've had a really good time with this one. You know, whenever you start a campaign game like this with at least for us, how we've talked about, we're hesitant with campaign mm. games. You really don't want to get to the point where you're like regretting it, where you're like, oh, like we could be playing other games now if I hadn't like committed us to this thing. Um, and I'm happy to report that I don't feel that way about <laughs> Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle Earth. We've had a really good time with it. Yeah. Um, it helps that we all like the Lord of the Rings theme. 
Um, it's just a really good group for it. I feel like three is probably the best count for this game. Mm. Um, and just really fun with the upgrade paths and the, the story and exploration. You know, it's nothing too crazy crunchy. Um, but I've really appreciated that. It's a lot easier to get to the table. I mean, we can get up and running pretty quickly um, with this. Um, so another good example of like, I don't anticipate this being on the list next year. I'll probably play the finale and I don't think it's likely another campaign of it's going to start. Um, but I intend for it to stay in my collection and hope to do campaigns in the future. Um, but for 2023, the year belongs to Lord of the Rings. Lord Jeez of the Lord. Rings. Besides me not being interested in the theme uh, too much, uh, that is a game that I think I would love playing. So I think you would enjoy it a lot. I don't think it makes sense for your collection, given that you have something like Star Wars Imperial Assault and some of these other campaign games you could be playing. Yeah. Like, it's hard to recommend it to somebody that isn't like into Lord of the Rings because there's so such many, a draw. Yeah, well, yeah, there's so many great campaign games out yeah, there that totally. you might as well get it for the IP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there you go. You know, these are numbers that would pale in comparison to some of our, uh, back when we were living together, you know, Ugh. we, we put up these numbers in a month, but the glory days, <laughs> the glory days. But today with, uh, with young kids, full-time jobs and, uh, the current, you know, we have to spend all this time making these videos. It's like, my what are we gosh, doing? I know we could play twice uh, as many yeah. games. If it wasn't for this dang channel. Yeah. If I didn't lock dang in <laughs> the basement to edit all week, I'm but handcuffed down here. You can't even see. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fun. To, it's fun to talk about, fun to reflect on. We'll see uh, what what makes it onto it next year. We're interested to see what were top games for you. But those are the ones that for us got to the table the most in 2023. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you want to hear what our most played games of all time are, we've actually got a video for that that we recorded. You can check that out right here. And YouTube's got another video suggested as well. But either way, we will see you in the next one.